Hello and welcome to the VW Golf 1 GTI from 1983. It's so one of the most iconic hot hatches to ever be produced and is still well sought after today. So the VW Golf 1 GTI, one of my favorite cars in real life, is actually receiving a very special feature and that is an engine swap in Gran Turismo 7. And we can actually get the engine from the Audi Quattro Pikes Peak. Yes, the full-on Group B Rally Monster. We can take that engine and put it into our little Golf 1. Now, this is going to change the performance drastically. And I'm actually concerned that it might be a little bit too much power for the little Mark 1 to handle. But there's only one way to find out. And that's to swap it and get right onto track. Now, to engine swap the Mark 1 Golf, well, we need to head on over to GT Auto. And once we're there, we're going to head on over into car maintenance and service. And we're going to see that the engine swap is actually priced at 1.25 million credits. It is quite a hefty price to get this engine swap. And well, when it comes to the actual performance, right away you can see there's a night and day difference when it comes to performance. Because the standard engine produces 588 brake horsepower that's compared to the standard mark one's engine fully maxed out that only produces 320 brake horsepower so straight off the bat we are at almost double the brake horsepower so that's insane because we can still go ahead and upgrade this engine and that's what we're gonna do right now now when it comes to upgrading the quattro's engine well there isn't really much you can add because it's coming out of a race car, there's only really one part that you can add. And that's a turbocharger. You can choose between a medium RPM turbocharger and a high RPM turbocharger. So for the video, since we're going to fully upgrade the engine, we are going to slap on that high RPM turbocharger, which is going to add exactly 200 brake horsepower onto that 588 figure. So that's right. We are almost at 800 brake horsepower in a vehicle that weighs what? 820 kgs that is absolutely insane so this is almost a eh, almost a one-to-one -one power to weight ratio and i just don't think before i even get behind the wheel of it i just don't think that this mark one is going to be able to handle it now just like every other vehicle i'm going to turn off the traction control and see what it does and immediately i am greeted with wheel spin i knew exactly I knew this was gonna happen. So, wheel spin city, wheel spin central is what you get once you engine swap the Mark 1 Golf and you actually fully upgrade the engine. Now, the biggest thing that I have to worry about is the car gonna be able to slow down, and frankly, it actually can. Now, with the car, if you go foot flat and you are trying to go around the corner, the car is going to understeer. But this is just a front wheel drive thing. But it doesn't help that it has the front wheels refusing to, get, to gain traction. So it's really just how long these wheels are going to spin for. And it's actually incredible because no matter what gear you're in, the car is going to wheel spin. It's a lot of fun but it is so much slower than you could actually be going because the car isn't able to put its full power down. Now surprisingly, you are still able to turn. I don't know why I thought this vehicle was just going to be such a problem when it comes to handling. But it's actually not. With it being a very short wheelbase, very lightweight, the car is very dirty. But as I said, with the car having just so much power, it's actually a lot slower in my eyes than if we actually just lift the standard engine in. And I'm sure if we actually run lap times and compare it, you will actually see that there's a difference. But I just want to run a test quickly. So, what we're going to do now on the straight away, we're just going to reverse. We are going to put this thing in first here. And we're going to see how long this thing actually spins its wheels for. So, now, handbrake, foot, mesh to the floor. And we're going to see how long this thing can spin its wheels. So, the entirety of first gear, without a doubt, wheel spin. Second gear, we go in, there's wheel spin. We shift into third, we are still getting wheel spin. Into fourth, we are still getting wheel spin. 
and by the time we reach the end of the straightaway we have to jam brakes but the car still never gets traction that's just how powerful the audi quattro's engine actually is for the little golf so what i'm actually thinking of maybe we can still make the golf a lot faster than it was with its standard engine being fully upgraded but by actually detuning if you don't want to detune the vehicle you can however turn on the traction control even if you set it over to level 2 well that's ample enough of grip because the traction control system is actually gonna kill the power going to the front wheels so yes the car is still gonna be a lot slower because now the traction control just keeps cutting in to keep the wheels from spinning but even with traction control level 2 on those front wheels still light up there's just there, there's a limit with the golf that you have to reach in order to just get all of the potential out of it and i feel with some detuning we might actually hit that limit or just find the absolute sweet spot between absolute chaos and the vehicle actually just being underpowered so with that being said let's not waste any more time and let's just jump straight into tuning the vehicle now by simply taking the high rpm turbocharger off we are now gonna see how much of a difference it actually makes to the controllability of the vehicle so now when it actually comes to corners the car isn't really all over the place it's just more of you're losing so much time with the wheel spin so with us now removing 200 brake horsepower the vehicle still spins its wheels because 588 brake horsepower is not something to look down upon the car is still insanely fast and it actually almost gives the same performance because we aren't actually spinning our wheels as much as with the 788 so yes it does actually make a difference especially if you're gonna use this vehicle with no traction control on which i know most of you actually race with no traction on so it's important to note that instead of fighting a vehicle and i know don't even come at me in the comment section talking about oh you need to tune your diff you need to do this the vehicle you can tune your diff all you want the vehicle is still gonna break traction as how powerful the engine is it's just way too powerful for the little calls to actually handle so the front wheels are gonna spin regardless which is it's a double-edged sword because okay you are going slowly but hearing that 20 valve turbo screaming it's just it's such a good sound so that's why if i run the vehicle with traction control on with having the turbocharger and having without the turbocharger the vehicle is actually faster without the turbocharger it was actually about a second and a half faster without the turbocharger than with the high rpm turbocharger so it does make a difference how big of a difference is gonna make for you i don't know so if you are gonna try it out let me know your experience with the golf am i just over exaggerating or does it just feel like even with the grippier size in the game the golf simply cannot handle it so with those being said thank you so much for watching i am going to be trying to make a money method for this little golf so if you're interested in that well hit the subscribe button and i'll see you guys in the next one thank you so much for watching thank you so much for your time and i'll see you in the next one peace